Hi everyone, welcome to the Civil War Monitors Behind the Lines. I'm Katie Brackett Fialka, your host, and today I'm talking with Dave Thompson, who is a PhD candidate at the University of Georgia. Dave's going to talk to us a little bit about creative marketing and how it helps sell bonds during the Civil War. But before we do that, I think maybe he should tell us a little bit about how bonds worked. Thanks for having me, Katie. Uh, yeah, it's important to kind of give just a very basic understanding of how bonds work, because particularly for the North, that's how they funded the war. So you are obviously borrowing funds from an individual that you will pay back in time. And in the meantime, they're going to be getting uh, semi-annual interest payments. Um, so obviously twice a year, they're going to be getting some sort of interest payment back from the federal government. And this is how they fund a majority of the war. We have very little taxation during the Civil War. People don't really care for taxes back then, uh, just like today, but uh, they do a little bit of it, but it's very much for, for wealthier individuals. And then other things like uh, customs duties on goods, uh, really slow to a trickle because you don't have that southern cotton, which was such a cash cow for the government in the antebellum period. Uh, so a bond is simply a promise from the government that they will repay those funds to you in time. And there was always some sort of condition on there. There's lots of different types of bonds. Uh, they range in terms of a minimum amount of time before you could get the funds back or you could ask for the funds back. And then there's a maximum date, the, the maturity date on those bonds. So all sorts of different combinations are going to be used during the course of the war. But you have to convince people to buy these bonds. And I think that's what makes the Civil War very different from a lot of wars in American history that predate it, is that we want to actually have uh, a wide swath of Northerners, if you're a, of the mentality of the United States Treasury here, to literally buy into the war. So uh, you're going to have to do a few things from the get-go. First of all, you need to make these affordable. So you mm -hmm. need to make these in smaller denominations than has normally been the case uh, in prior uh, conflicts like the Mexican-American War, Revolutionary War, War of 1812, where we do sell bonds in all three of those wars. So you have to make them small. Uh, you have to set up uh, ways that people could perhaps have payment plans. So you can give them, say, six months to pay all of the money that they need to to buy a $50 bond, for instance. So they don't need to have it all up front. Uh, so you're going to do things like that. but. You want to make these appealing to individuals, right? You want to move these beyond just your, your Wall Street bankers and financiers. You're trying to get everybody to buy these things. So they start these elaborate marketing campaigns using PR firms, largely based out of New York City, to sell the war to the American populace. And I say American populace because ultimately they try to sell these things in the Confederacy as well wow. as the war goes on. As Union Army moves in, uh, these bond agents follow right behind the army. <laughs> so you have people buying them in a majority of the Confederate states even before the war is over. Uh, but you need to explain what a bond is to people because a lot of people don't know what they are. So they set up these kind of fictional Q&As in newspapers mm -hmm. with uh, your county farmer, which is actually just uh, the PR firm rattling off these questions like what's a bond, how much do they cost, when do I get my money back, and the bond, the bond agents, excuse me, are answering these questions. And then you have these very kind of highfalutin tales of individuals who are, you know, in Indiana and they are walking all the way to Washington, D.C. to buy bonds. You have people dress up uh, like essentially homeless people uh, so they won't be assaulted on the road because they're carrying a wad of cash and they show up at a bank. And these stories are publicized. And they try to make these stories uh, as widely known as possible. They're even being carried in uh, modern-day Hawaii. These stories are in the newspapers there in an effort to try and pitch this war uh, to a larger swath of the populace. You want as many people to buy them as you can. It ends up being millions of individuals in the North as well as parts of the Confederacy that buy these bonds. Uh, so in that sense, they're very successful. But you have to be uh, creative. You have to... Uh, try to appeal to individuals' patriotism, their mm -hmm. self-interest, uh, and make arrangements that are conducive to them. So kind of one of the last things I'll mention is that uh, one prime example of this is that they set up what they call night agency offices. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to reach out to blue-collar workers, what we consider blue-collar workers, people who work on the docks, for instance, in New York City, you need to make these bonds accessible to them. So they set up these places where essentially you can get free coffee, uh, free alcohol, depending on the time of day. 
if that really matters for these stock workers that they're working the day or night shift. Uh, and it's like selling a timeshare. You mm -hmm. pitch this so story to these workers. You, you make it very uh, basic, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in there so that they can understand it appropriately. And that way you draw on a lot of individuals. And as the war goes on, uh, the bond sales become more democratic in the sense that more and more people from the populace are buying these smaller denominations. They emphasize the daily small denomination sales and things like the newspaper to make people realize that, hey, this is another way that I can contribute that I may have a loved one who's serving, be it a son, be it a husband, be it a brother, but this is another way that I can contribute to the cause. Uh, and that I'm putting my confidence, in essence, in the union government. Uh, and as the war goes on, you have more and more people uh, willing to do so. And it carries over into the post-war period and Reconstruction as well. Well, thank you so much for talking with us, Dave. This was very interesting. My pleasure, Katie.